Welcome. Going carnivore in Thailand. On this video, there's going to be some stories, some information about Thailand, some information about how I'm doing on the carnivore diet. And I'm making this video on my day number 82. And just to hit the carnivore on a light touch first, uh, I wanted to do that. And today, I've been back from the trip for about three days and I hadn't weighed myself and yesterday I weighed myself and when I did weigh myself I was absolutely shocked that it went from the normal 140 60 to 158.4 and dropped to 152.3 yesterday and that's a pretty substantial drop in weight so the scale I guess I decided not to lie this week then today I weighed myself again and I weighed 150 kilograms that means so far I've lost 25 kilograms and 55.1 pounds in 84 days which I'm rather happy about now as far as my blood pressure I checked it yesterday my blood pressure was 129 over 77 and I also checked my blood sugar levels. My blood sugar levels was at 97. And I was real happy with that. So that is what I'm touching on right now as far as the actual carnivore statistics. So I'm thrilled. I mean, I, I'm literally thrilled. I want to show you that. Look at this. This shirt used to be tight. I could pull it out six inches from my stomach. And it's amazing. Now, I want to talk a little bit about tidbits from Thailand here. And especially the Thailand that's not Bangkok. The Thailand that's not Pattaya. The Thailand is not Phuket or Huayan or Chiang Mai, which are the big cities. But <coughs> the Thailand is the rural areas. Now, myself and Noi have been together almost two years, coming up on it. And... After we were together for a while, I asked her about her ability to drive, and she didn't know how to, how to drive a car at all. She, and she knew how to drive a motorcycle or a motor scooter, one of the two. And uh, but she didn't have a driver's license. And out in a rural country, a lot of people they just don't. If they ever get caught by a police with not having a license, she said, give them a couple hundred baht, and they just, they forget about it. So it's not a big thing. But she comes from a poor family. And she said, we've never had a car. We've never had a truck. All they had was a saline which is a motorcycle with this little sidecar carry-all 
utility bed on the side of it. So there's no way to drive. And because you're poor, you can't afford a car. And because you don't have a car, that limits the amount of actual travel that you could do to find other types of way to make money. And on one of those motorcycles, the three-wheel motorcycles, Celine, her family buys and sells vegetables. They buy them, they prepare them, then they take them to the market and they sell them. And that's what they do. But they have to do that with that sal salon or saling or motorcycle or three wheel. Well, the typically those go about 15 mile an hour, maybe 10 mile an hour sometimes. And they typically on the streets here in Thailand, they drive down the side of the street and the traffic passes them by. And they don't really get in the traffic. They more or less drive on the on the edge, drive on the shoulder of the road because they'd hold up traffic so bad. Now, sometimes they drive in the, in the road, but they always drive on the on the inside edge and then people pass them by. It's, it's <laughs> I think it's flat dangerous because you're going so slow and everybody's passing you by, you have no protection typically her parents you know they'll put mom and dad and a couple other people from the family all on the motorcycle one time no helmets you know that sort of thing so as i prepared noi for driving we she went to driving school, but they didn't do a very good job at teaching her. And she is getting better now. And after the Songkran holiday, which starts today, and everybody's going back to rural Thailand where they come from, it's a big deal. I mean, right now the traffic in Thailand is so bad heading away from the big cities. Uh, all the toll roads are all toll free and they're bumper to bumper and they're going very slow and everybody's trying to get home and see family, that sort of thing. Everybody wants to go stand and get wet by somebody who wants to squirt them with a squirt gun or throw a bucket of wa cold water on. And that's all part of Sankran. And there's a lot of praying in the Buddhist religion that this is almost a this is almost a Thai New Year's. And it's strange because Thailand celebrates three New Year's. They celebrate the Western New Year's on January first, and then they celebrate the so called Asian or Chinese New Year. And then in April here they have Sankran. And Sankran is a giant New Year's party where they all pray for good luck. And Noi went out and she bought all these fruits and the fruits were bananas and oranges and passion fruits and who knows what other kind of fruits. Grapes. She bought them all. Then she puts them in this arrangement and she put them out next to our vehicles to bless our vehicles and then she brought these lucky flowers that's the way i get told they are and they're this yellow flower that supposedly brings good fortune she put them on the the little shrine thing she made for praying and and did that today but it's all to bring good luck and safety and uh, put them out in the garage. And quite touching, really. So anyway, we decided, I decided, that 
when the weather is really bad, they have to go like 25 kilometers to sell their vegetables up there. And during the rainy season, driving 25 kilometers at, you know, 10 mile an hour in the rain, in the open, no helmets, just, I guess, hats. It's miserable. And also doesn't give you any chance to make any more money because you only can carry so much on that sidecar. It's very small. I mean, it's like three foot by three foot on the on the little cart. And it's like the sides go up about six, eight inches. It's small. So we started looking here in Patia for used pickup trucks. And we looked all over it. And to be honest, the prices here in Patia were way higher than I expected and way less uh, of a selection of used pickup trucks. Now, for those who don't know it, on a per capita basis, Thailand has the highest number of pickup trucks in any country in the world. And this is a trucking society. Now, we just drove 600 kilometers north and 600 kilometers south. And it, it struck me that, you know, I was surrounded by 18-wheeler after 18-wheeler. The roads were full of 18-wheelers. I mean, I'm past them left and right. You got them carrying coal and semen, and you got them carrying steel and cars, and you name it, they're carrying it. And between them are just pickup truck after pickup truck. They're everywhere. And people think of Thailand as this beautiful weather that everybody comes to and it's a giant tourist destination and that's all Thailand's good for. Well, let me tell you, this is a manufacturing hub. It is the second largest economy in Southeast Asia. It, Thailand makes everything. And the reason they make everything is because the Thai government unlike the American government, protects their people. As a foreign non-Thai citizen, there's like a list of 50 jobs that you can't in any way, shape, or form permit or otherwise occupy. You want to be a massage therapist? Not here. Not if you're not a Thai citizen. You want to be a taxi driver? Not here. There's just a ton of occupations that you're not allowed to be as a non-Thai citizen. But the other thing that Thailand does is they tell these multinational corporations like Toyota, if you want to sell Toyotas, you've got a choice. You come build a factory here, you hire Thai people, and you build your Toyotas in Thailand and sell them in Thailand for normal prices. Or you can import them from Japan. And whatever the car costs, let's say the car is a $30,000 car, we're going to charge you $90,000 on top of it to get it in the door. So that means you have to sell that $30,000 Toyota for $120,000 U.S. dollars. Well, that don't go over well, so Toyota builds plants, and Ford build plants, and Chevrolet builds plants, and everybody who wants to have any coverage here, Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, you know, MG, 
Isuzu, Lexus. It goes on and on. They all build some cars here. And the ones that aren't built here, people are paying a fortune to drive them. So we looked for Toyotas here, and then when, when we went up and we did the house blessing ceremony the next day on Monday, myself and Noe, her mom or dad or sister and her sister's boyfriend, we all got in, in our car, and we drove like 200-plus kilometers. We must have hit 12 different dealerships between Saturday with me and Noy looking and Monday we at least hit 12 dealerships, but we drove like 200 kilometers because we, we thought we found something that was pretty far away. And we went out to look at it, but it wasn't worth it. So eventually, we had seen something on Saturday at one of the spots that Noy really liked. And we went back and we worked out a deal. And basically, we found a Toyota pickup truck called a Rebo. And it's a manual transmission pickup truck, which they call a space cab. So it's got like doors behind the regular doors where you can put small people in the back or a mount of cargo in the side behind the front seat. So, you know, two people can sit up front and three smaller people can sit behind them on a fold down type seat that's in the back. They call it a space cab. We found one of those and, uh, we basically spent 370000 baht, which was a pretty good price. Now, it did have 144,000 kilometers on it, but it was really clean looking. Very, very clean. And this is a diesel. Most trucks over here are diesels, not gas. And... Some are turbocharged diesels, some are not turbocharged diesels. To be honest, I didn't care whether it was turbocharged or not. Also, I would say 95% of all pickups here are manual transmission five speeds, not automatics. I wish it was an automatic, but to be honest, 95% are manual, so it makes finding a good automatic at a good price very difficult. We saw an MG, and it was an automatic, and it was pretty on the outside, but it rode like a tank. Test drove it, bounced us all the way down the highway. It was terrible. And uh, so anyway... We ended up doing this transaction and the dealer handles it all. They'll register it for Noe. They'll send her the blue book in about a week down here to Patia. It's in Noe's name. It's not in my name. And the insurance here is very unusual. It costs about 16,000 baht, which that's approximately $437 for full coverage insurance for a year. And they insure the truck here. They don't insure the driver. If the driver's got a license, they could have had a spotless driving record for 50 years like me, who haven't, who knock on wood, hasn't scratched the vehicle in 40 years or more. Actually, 
I really haven't had a real wreck since I was like 18 years old. Or you could be a brand new driver like her father who has a license. It doesn't matter. If you got a license, the truck's insured. It's not the driver. Got a driver with a license who's had two DUIs, they don't care. As long as they got a valid license, the truck's insured. So basically, if you get right down to it, it's about $35 a month. Something like that. For full coverage of a 2019, I didn't tell you a year, it was 2019 truck. And after she bought it, her, uh, the dealership, they're real slick about it here. I mean, they want you to stand in front of this banner, and it's a big deal, and they put a big bow on it, and they want to do a video, and they want to put it on social media and on Facebook and TikTok and show what kind of good dealer they were. They were a pretty clean dealership. All their cars look clean. Uh, it was just an, it was a quality dealership. There was a couple dealers who had trucks. I wouldn't buy from them because they just, the dealer looked like it was low rent. You know, like we buy this junk and we try to sell this junk and we polish it up good. You know, I pulled into one place and you got some, some guy with a, with a, a bottle of white paint and a touch-up brush going and dabbing all the nicks on the car like this. And he's dabbing all the nicks, and then some guy's trying to say, well, we got this over here, we got that over here, which means, uh, yeah, you probably touched this one up a bunch too. So, for the last five or six days... Noise been getting reports. There's a a guy in their village who knows how to drive real well and has a truck, and he's been taking her dad out and going with him to teach him how to drive. Now I saw her dad try to drive the day they the day he bought it or the day we bought it. And he did okay until he come up to the stop sign and had to take off again. And he stalled it like three times. And you know, lurch forward and stall, lurch forward and stall. And then uh, he got out and the way his sister's boyfriend joke, he jumped in and drove it the rest of the way home. So uh, I guess what I'm saying here on these stories is yeah the people here in Thailand there is a wide discrepancy this this country's got a lot of money and there's people driving Ferraris who paid a million dollars for them and they're prevalent they're all over the place I mean high dollar if you see a Ferrari uh Porsche, all these high dollar cars, hyper cars, Rolls Royces, you see them, they're everywhere. And you know they paid four times what you pay for in the United States. And they're here, and there's a lot of money in this country. But then you have the other people who don't have a lot of money. And I think by just, this goes to my video I made on my other channel where I, it was, I want to die broke. That's the goal, die broke. So many people, they retire, they don't know when to retire. But when they do retire, the first thing they do is they tighten up their belt and say, well, I don't have any more income coming in than I got now. So I have to make that last the rest of our life. And most people, 
end up spending so little compared to what they used to spend that they end up, when they do die, they got a lot of money left over. And I'd rather see me give a, a hand, a helping hand up for some good people who could use it now and I, I've never I've never uh, felt so good about it. so that's my story I know this was probably a long video and if you actually made it to the end of this video well Please leave me a comment and say that you watched the whole thing. I didn't waste my time. That's why I put all the carnivore stuff up front. Because, you know, part of the carnivore is to do the best for your health and to feel the best that you can feel. And uh, I've lost 55 pounds in 82 days. And I've got another 60 kilos to lose. But that's possible. I just keep on going. But you know, there's more to feeling good than just physically feeling good. Got to be happy. Got to be happy with yourself. And happy with... happy with where you're at in life if you can you know do the best you can the one thing you can't be is grumpy I mean if you want to be grumpy don't come to Thailand we don't need any more grumpy people over here we probably got too many already the last thing I ever want to be known as is a grumpy old man don't want to be a grumpy old man I want to be a happy young man. So if you made it to the end of this video, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment and say you actually watched the whole damn thing. Because uh, this channel is all about karma. And if I can inspire somebody else to pass along more good karma, that's, that's a good thing.